Hi! If you didn't watch my previous video, thanks to some advice by Shunner and Big Bad RPG, I decided to open the curtain. I had some issues when the video image was severely affected by it, but because I have lately taken more distance between me and the camera, I think the video will be improved and unaffected by a sort of uh, stuttery effect, hopefully. Of course, I am still going to be recording videos at night, and in that case, I cannot help it. There's going to be poor lighting and the uh, scary thumbnails that sometimes result from those videos, but I hope that, that my daytime videos will improve with this. Okay. Mm. This time, I wanted to talk about random tables in tabletop role-playing games. I think that random tables are quite entertaining, potentially entertaining, for the game master or dungeon master, because you come up with, with all sorts of results for your adventures. But the main problem with random tables is that they take somewhat a, a bit of time when you use them. If you are planning to use them during the session, the players are going to feel that break in the flow, that interruption. When you are playing solo or designing your own adventures, you are making your rolls, you are taking your time because you are engaged. You are, oh, I'm rolling the, in, on, on the tables and I got this result. Oh, that's pretty cool. Or, oh, that doesn't make no, uh, sense. I'm going to modify this result with this other result because otherwise it makes no sense with the game world or whatever. Or maybe you want to have fun just like that. Just come up with some crazy results and you use them as they appear. So random tables are quite fun, in my opinion, at least for me. But definitely, if you are employing random tables at, at the table, at the gaming table with your players, you need to make things as optimal as possible. In the case of Dungeon Crawl Classics, that, that game or any variations or games that are based on that system, they have so many random tables. Just look at this one in the uh, uh, Weird Frontiers. So many tables, so as a player or a game master, you need to keep those tables handy at the table so that you don't interrupt the flow of the game. Either have, as a game master, have some bookmarks or sticky notes or whatever inside of the book or have the PDF open at that section or print the tables. The same thing applies to the players because the players have their own tables when it comes to the results of spells, critical hits. And that way, when you are playing, you're, you're not going to be like, okay, uh, and you open the book and you look, uh, just a second, guys. Uh, oh, here, here it is. And you still have to roll now. That way, oh, I got this result. And you roll it. Oh, no, this happened. And that's it. When it comes to those crazy results, they, they really add a lot to, to the game. In the case of Dungeon Crawl Classics or other similar games, you come up with some mutations, corruption effects, some very positive or very negative effects, and it's very fun to, how would you say, apply that to the description, to the narrative. Now you have to deal with those crazy results, and, and it's an exercise of creativity. Now you need to come up with a reason as to why that happens during that particular instance in the game. So they are very fun to use. But I would advise against, like I said, unless you, it's a simple role. Perhaps when it comes to adventure generation, don't use them at the table, perhaps. In my case, unless, unless it's a very simple table, like you make a roll and, oh, it's this encounter. That's it, the encounter is already prepared. You go to that encounter and you run it immediately. In the best, uh, I, preferably, you would memorize that encounter. So when you roll and mercenary group from this region okay and you start suddenly you hear this noise about you you see a mercenary company marching and not waste too much time oh well, a mercenary group which ones are those oh and you start to page and look you look for those generally speaking i prefer to use the random tables when designing adventures that way i come up with all of those random results in the case of the quick and classic role-playing game those random events or encounters, I design them beforehand. You have to roll like four or five times for many of them. Then you have like this package result. I'm, I'm like, okay, it's all ready. It's all good. And then you, when the players are going through the wilderness or the dungeon and you roll and there is an, a random event, they obtain some sort of 
random encounter, whatever. Then you have the encounter prepared beforehand. You have it all neatly packaged. But it's all up to you. I, was, I would strongly advise against interrupting the flow of the game. These are just like my some general tips. You know how to handle things. As long as the flow keeps going, keeps proceeding, make those random results, make those rolls at the moment or prepare them beforehand as I usually do it. So thank you for watching this video. Let me know your, your own ways, your own methods on using random tables. Are they similar to mine, to my recommendations, or you have some other tips and advice? Let us know in the comments section. Thank you for watching my videos as always. And thank you so much to those of you that are going the extra mile to support the channel. If anyone else wishes to further support the channel, the information on how to do that will be in the description below. And remember that my campaign, I am currently starting this campaign. It's going to be like a retro video game style, a very simple system using the Remines RPG system. I'm going to put a link in the description that will take you to the video with the basic information. We have two player characters. We only need one or two more. And we're going to start playing this Tuesday. So once again, thank you. And remember, it is better to roleplay and fail in character than not to roleplay and fail as a player. Thank you. And see you later.